motivating people at work is one of your central roles as a manager. Your job is to keep them enthusiastic, keep morale high. So it pays to understand a little bit about motivation. The problem we have for a short introduction in a course like this is that there are literally hundreds of theories of motivation. So the tips I'm going to give you recognise that and focus on what matters most. One of the earliest and most important pieces of research into motivation recognised that there was a distinction between the things that make people feel good in the workplace and the things that make people feel bad in the workplace. But what Hertzberg was able to discover was that the things that make people feel bad, when you fix them, they don't feel good. These are not motivators gone wrong. These are what he called hygiene factors. And what he learned was that you're never ever going to motivate someone and make them feel good by using hygiene factors. But if you get the hygiene factors wrong, then it ain't no point in focusing on motivators because people are still going to feel bad. So <clears throat> what are some of these hygiene factors? Well, the principle among them are things like basic good conditions at workplace. Quite literally, hygiene is one of them. If people go into the washrooms or the kitchen areas and they're filthy and disgusting, then people are going to hate working at their workplace for the simple reason that, why wouldn't you? So make sure that you get all of the basics right and you address any systemic failings in the organisation to be respectful of its employees. When you've done that, you have the basis upon which to motivate. The second important thing to understand about motivation is the critical role that fairness has to play. And it was John Stacy Adams who first started to understand that human beings are wired for fairness. Consequently, if we perceive that our working conditions aren't fair, then we're not going to be motivated. And the truth is that very few people are actually worried about their salaries and their paying conditions. What worries them is when they compare, on the one hand, their salary, and on the other hand, their colleagues. And if they find a mismatch and inequity between the work they're doing and the remuneration they're getting in return, and the work their colleagues are doing, and the remuneration that their colleagues are getting in return, that unfairness is massively demotivating. It's important to note, however, that as important as it is, fairness is just another hygiene factor that you have to get right. And we all have a kind of like a fairness sensor in our brain. You need to treat everybody in your organisation fairly. And that's not just because it's the right thing to do, but because where people perceive there is unfairness, they will be demotivated. There are a lot of different motivators, and there are far too many for me to discuss here. You can see a number of them scrolling along the screen as we talk. What therefore is most important is that you understand which motivational levers work for each of your members of staff and you apply them. And some of the most important, some of the ones that will crop up time and time again are things like the value some people place on workplace relationships. The importance to many people to have their achievements recognised. And yet to other people, it's simply the feeling that they have made achievements. For other people, important motivators might be position or authority or power or status of some kind. For some, it's a sense that they have mastered the skills that are available to them. And for others, it's a sense that they are in control of the work that they're doing. Get to know each of your people, understand what drives them 
and what the right motivational leaders are for them and use those levers to help you to motivate them. I'm going to finish up with my fourth tip based on one motivator which has been shown to work for just about everybody. A simple piece of research showed that people left work feeling miserable, usually when they hadn't felt they've achieved anything during their working day. And yet, when people have felt that they have achieved something during their working day, they felt great. So what does this tell us about motivation? It tells us that people need to feel that they made some form of accomplishment during the day. So my top tip is this. Help people to set milestones for achievements for themselves and ideally at least one significant achievement per day. Something that they can achieve and therefore feel good going home. Ideally, possibly even two or three achievements. If you help people to split up their work into a series of achievements so that they can feel whenever they finish a day's work that they've done something worthwhile, then they'll go home feeling good. And that will be motivating. So, four tips on helping to motivate the people around you. First of all, make sure that you address the hygiene factors and get the basics right. Secondly, treat everybody with absolute scrupulous fairness. Third, find the levers for each individual and address them. And fourth, make sure that you give everybody the chance to accomplish something by the end of each working day. <laughs>